Hey guys, thanks for voting. I'm going to go ahead and install the Modify 15.1 speed gears and also the Modify 8mm ceramic bearings. Let me go ahead and get started. Okay, what I'm going to do is go ahead and install high speed gears, bearings, and since I'm working on new gears and bearings, I'm going to need extra shims. So I'm going to use the modified shim set. So first, let me take out the existing 8mm bearings. Oh, and you guys are asking, um, this is a plastic uh, ported piston head for the stock setup. Put the reverse latch off to the side. And for these parts, I just put them there for now. I'll, if I need shims, I'll go over there and get them. Just kind of press with my fingers to get the bearings out. Kind of wiggle them out. Okay, cool. I got them out. Okay, to install these, I'm basically going to press them in my fingers by hand. Uh, some bearings or bushings are kind of difficult to press in. So you want to be gentle with them. Uh, you want to evenly press on. If you hit like with a center punch, you will break them. So just be careful with these. So it's always a good idea. Just try one first. Okay, cool. Even better. Here we go. Look at that. Okay, cool. And if you look at them, they all easily go in by hand. And a simple way to make sure you're installing them evenly is kind of look at it at an angle. And you can see, okay, there's a little lip that goes around. And then also on this side, kind of hold it at an angle. And you'll see pretty much uniform and you'll be good. Let me do the same on this side. Okay, cool. And double check. Yep, looks good. Okay, now for the gears. For the gears, they're really good, high quality. If you don't have these yet, at least go to your local store and check them out. You like them. Okay, first I'm just gonna pop it in there and share like before and after. Okay, they run pretty smooth. Just press the gearbox together by hand and you can hear them rattling. I don't have the screws in, but this is a clear sign that I still have a lot of shimming to do just because you can hear that. And like if you press on See how the whole unit moves? You have the bearing and the axle move. So that means I gotta add a bunch of shims on the bottom and the top to keep them all running smoothly. And there's lots of ways to shim a gearbox. The main goal is have it run smoothly without building up extra friction and noise. And then that's how you get it done. It takes lots of practice. So here, let me go ahead and just start throwing some shims on there. Okay, when it spins like that, that's cool, but it doesn't really tell you anything. You just basically want to look at, make sure that the spur gear doesn't rub on the bearing or the bushing, depending on what you're doing. If it's too low or if these are too high, like if the lip is too much, it will rub. So like right now, I probably have too many on there, but just showing you what to check for. Okay, here is just with the eight mil bearings and the gears and some shims put in. I have the screws installed and that's it, no reverse latch. And let me spin it. No grease or oil either. Basically the dry gear set sounds good. It makes several rotations, which is great. Okay, let me go ahead and open it real quick and add some grease and further explain the shimming process. Basically, when you're shimming the gears, you want them to spin freely and not have the surfaces rub on each other, causing a high-pitched squeak or grind noise. Look at an angle. Have them like that. 
you know, this one's pretty close. That's good. You know, down here I have more room. Let me add a little bit of grease. Uh, this is from the Echo Grease Set. Um, the red grease, I'm going to go ahead and package the bearings real quick like this. Just get a dollop. Let's get the bearings, put some grease on there, squish it through like that, and the other side. It'll work its way in, and just do that to all the bearings, that's what I do. And it will kind of slow down, but eventually get worked out the excess that's not needed, and you'll be good. So the red grease for the bearings, the black grease, you want to go ahead and uh, put on the gears itself. So you can put a generous portion on, uh, just get thrown off. But real quick for testing, I'll show you how if you have too much space or not enough space, the excess grease will get kind of thrown out of the way and kind of say, hey, look at you have too many shims there or not enough. And it's just fun to make a mess. Okay. Gears now are only making like three rotations or so. That's normal because I do have extra grease in there. Just kind of bog it down. Excess grease will come out. That's fine. Basically, once you plug in the, the motor and it spins real quick, all the excess will be removed. But if you... Okay. Open this up real quick. Okay, cool. That's what we're looking for. You have a thin layer of grease on the top plate, a thin layer here, and if it's there's no grease there, that means this gear and this gear are too close and just scraping it off. The thin layer there, that's good. You have a little on the top here, so it's meshing, and then on the bottom, you know, you have an easy, even amount, so that's good. Let me just go ahead and close it up. Uh, gear set's good. Let me pack the rest of the bearings and done. Motor attach with the reversal latch and just gonna shoot it real quick. You will have to adjust the motor and you will notice with the reversal latch you do have a ratchety noise because the reverse latch goes back and forth on the bevel gear. Just uh, go ahead and check your functions and everything. And good to go. Let me put it in the gun. Yeah! Check out that video. Hey guys, I uh, just finished putting it all together with the new gears. I did have a piston strip on the stock piston, but it's like now it's a high performance race car, you can't take uh, factory tires to the track. So other than that, what I did is I took the stock piston out of the Echo one AC Heavy. You can check out the Facebook and you can see the picture of the piston. It has second tooth already removed and it has a blue ported polycarb piston head. I added a spacer for the AOE and it's good to go. Let me go ahead and shoot it real quick. And I'm using an Echo 2 OBBs, and it looks like it's about 336, 340. I'll probably have to go in, maybe take out like a, and the full auto test. It's shooting about 28 BB a second, maybe 25, 28 or so. It's pretty good. For indoor, it's really good, especially with the trigger control on semi, you can just pull the trigger as fast as you want. This has been Brian from Echo and USA, thanks for watching.